everyone and welcome back to another tutorial this week I'm going to do something which I posted on my Facebook page of um, a lake and I got lots of good com compliments and comments about it asking me to do a painting on it so I'm going to do that this week it's the lock in Cork City um, if you're from Cork you'll know exactly what I'm talking about uh, okay it was it was hanging in a restaurant it sold um, I should have done I should have done a tutorial when I was painting it but do you know what I was just so busy um, I just didn't get a chance I had to paint it um, for a space that was on the wall so I just kind of painted it and got it done and hung it so I'm going to do a tutorial on it anyway this week alright I hope you don't mind um, I know I did promise a few people a couple of uh, requests but I you know I'm kind of trying to work out which is best to do first. Um, I will get around to them, don't worry. I do have one or two lined up, uh, which I am going to do. But I thought, as I'm, I, I need to paint this for someone. So I thought, well, as I'm doing it, I might as well do a tutorial. I do have the time. I'm in no rush or panic. Um, so I can set up my studio here and do a tutorial, okay? So that's it. Grab your stuff and let's go and have a bit of fun with this. Uh, it's going to be just from a slightly different angle, um, but it's going to be the same kind of scene, the same techniques. Um, it'll have the same kind of feel about it, but it's just from a different perspective. That's all. So let's go and give it a shot and see how it turns out. Okay, here we go. Um, there's the photograph. Now, isn't that lovely? It's, now, it's a very similar to the one that I'd done a couple of weeks back. Um, and a tutorial as well of the very same spot <coughs> excuse me but I didn't like that tutorial to be quite honest um, it was very sort of abstract and very loose this one I want to do more sort of refined and just I want, I want to just do this, the very same technique which I did in the one which I've done on my Facebook page now I'm going to put that up on the screen for you there okay now isn't that lovely it's just nice simple trees nice simple reflections and I'm going to use that technique for this photograph so it's going to be the very same okay now there's a the photograph again I have my colors here on a paper palette titanium white Naples yellow cadmium yellow pale a little burnt cyanide a little burnt umber some crimson some phthalo blue and black there are my colors I think that's all I'm going to need for this because I want to keep it simple and the problem is when you start introducing lots of colours on your palette um, it becomes very fussy and it can get messy so you're better off just kind of especially when you're starting out and you're learning just have a few colours and you can mix a lot of different colours with these handful of colours here you can mix pretty much any colour you need for a painting okay um, this for me is even probably a lot um, I could probably do this without burnt, um, without burnt umber really if I'm honest um, because you could just take a little black and a little burnt sienna to make it nice brown you see what I mean um, you know but it's there let's just use it let's just see how we get on okay brushes at the ready where is my brush um, okay here it is my lovely little stubby brush fantastic um, I have these on my Etsy page in a set if you want to go and buy them it just makes it easier I suppose rather than emailing and all that kind of stuff but they're in a set of three and they're fantastic this is lovely and warm there now you see it's perfect for trees and bushes and stuff like that and they're very soft very very soft so let's start with that I'm going to keep the sky very simple very plain um, not much blue if anything probably just a white maybe hint of yellow alright well, not in yellow, but you'll see what I mean. Let's dampen our brushes, and I have a little bit of turpentine here with a drop of linseed oil in it. Tiny, tiny, tiny little drop. So I'm just going to dampen my brush, and I'm going to soak off the excess like that, okay? Now, let's go into some white. Let's take a big dollop of white, and I want to make this lovely and creamy now. Very, very creamy. So, a tiny, tiny little bit of turpentine there on the side of your brush, just to wet that. Just to thin it out very slightly. And I'm going to take a touch of Naples yellow as well. Now more white again. Oh, and a very bright white, that's all. As you can see, there's a hint of a kind of a yellowy undertone in this. Now let's put that on. Now it's kind of very runny, you see. So if it does that, 
let's just take more white and another little bit of maple yellow make that nice and soft and creamy that's what we want there now look see now now we're getting there nice and soft and creamy so it's not soaking well it's not very wet but it's like a thick cream you see that's what I want I'm going to go along the top of the sky there and put that on I don't think I'm putting any blue in this sky <coughs> excuse me um, I want a little bit I want a little bit of blue I'm not going to use the colours on the photograph I'm going to um, use the painting which I sold actually of the lock on my Facebook page I'm going to use that painting those colours and I can't remember what colours were in that I know there was a tiny hint of blue but there wasn't much um, it was more so a lot of white up in the sky area there was a lot of white up there so let's just get some more and I primed my canvas only once because I want the layers to sort of soak in quickly and dry in quickly rather than having very wet paint all the time on my canvas so I only give it one coat of primer and I know then that my canvas is going to kind of be slightly on the dry side and the paint will dry in quicker and it will allow me to put layers on trees much quicker and much more effectively as well so that's my plan I would normally give my canvas two coats of primer um, but for this I don't want the paint to be very very wet for very long so I can see it now kind of when I look at the light sh hit hitting the canvas I can sort of see little areas which are kind of uh, kind, almost soaking through the canvas a little and that's what I want that's what I like to see now I'm going to go loosely here because in the other painting I've done I had a lot of foliage coming down here right into the picture so I'm going to leave that, I don't need to paint that too much um, ok I think we're safe enough with that a very simple bright sky, now you probably can't notice that on camera but it's a very simple bright sky you could even if you wanted I think now let's take a touch of black on the corner of our brush if you want let's just see where this goes um, hmm. perhaps a hint of blue look just a hint and this is really dry now look see how dry this is really dry let me just scrape that along there very very loosely look and I'll wet the brush I'll dry it and I'll go into some white and soften it right down now it's just, I suppose, we don't want it too whitey, do we? Let's just suggest that there's a little bit of darkness up in the sky. Now, it's only a tiny little bit, see? The tiniest, tiniest little darkness up there. Right, next we have trees. We have lots of trees all right along here. Let's put in some trees. And I'm just checking there. It is quite dry, isn't it? It is quite dry, I'll be honest. Now what I may do, I may take some tissue, okay? Dip it in my turpentine with a little linseed oil in it. And I might just give that area a little rub. Now, ideally, just use a little bit of linseed oil. I don't have it to hand, so I'm just going to use my tinners. And I'm going to moisten the canvas like this. And this will help take that dryness out of the canvas it should it should anyway just a little okay now that's enough and that can kind of soak away into the canvas and take the dryness out of it let's make up a nice green here now for this a nice distant green I'm going to take yellow and I'm going to take some phthalo blue now we have a very rich bright green don't we I'm going to take a little touch of black into that and I'll just keep adding what I need until I get what I need and remember when you're creating distant colours always go on the blue side now that's a very kind of a cool green there would you agree let's put more blue into that so we have a very cool green there now don't we so what I would do next is 
You can either add white or Naples yellow. Now if you add white, it becomes very bright and whitey, but I'd add Naples yellow. And that gives it a lovely chalky colour, but it gives it a lovely distant, soft colour as well. Now we could take a bit more blue into that, and a bit more Naples yellow. And let's try that now and see how that looks. Now, you see what I mean? So I think, let me take a touch more blue. I think that is probably a nice, um, a kind of a nice base colour to go for. So it's a bit more blue there now, and you see that will add a lot more distance to the painting, okay? It'll give us a lovely, pale, distant colour in the background. And I'm simply going to go along and dab, 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 dab with my brush, look. Twisting and turning as I go. Uh, we could add, perhaps, a touch of a mauve. Let's take some blue. Let's take a touch of pink. And some white. There we go. Touch of mauve, look. And I didn't clean my brush or anything, I just went right into the colours. A little hint of pink, a little hint of blue, and a little hint of white. And that'll give us a nice warm, kind of a distant colour as well. Let's get a bit more pink, look. You see, I'm mixing on the canvas as well. I'm not just mixing separate colours, I'm doing everything in the one spot. And I'm taking little t hints of this and little hints of that. So now we have our basic colours in for our trees, yes? Um, let's add a touch of Naples yellow and a touch of crimson. And what I'm going to do is create some light on some of the trees. So I'm just going to go up here now like this and create a little little light here and there on some of the trees. I might even take a touch of cadmium yellow, look. And I'm imagining that the light is kind of catching one side of these trees, you see? And this brush is fantastic, you see the way the brush is? It's very sort of rough. That's perfect. That's what I want, you see? And I'm, I have the brush at an angle, a very slight angle. So it's suggesting then that the foliage is falling kind of downwards. It gives you that impression. Now a little bit of yellow, a little bit of maple yellow and a bit of white. Uh, we could even go maybe higher with one or two of these as well. Just to give it a bit of variety, you know, just vary it a little. Now well, let's add plenty of light onto one or two of them. So you can see now why you put in this kind of stronger colour at the beginning, because you can work lights onto it then. You can work on your highlights. And I find that it's a nice way of painting trees, just for a nice loose kind of a landscape. So we have our basic kind of section of trees done, don't we? Uh, what I'm going to do next is add some little, maybe some little tree trunks, then some darks. I'm going to add some darks to this as well, so not to worry. I might even add some darks now. Let's take a little black, and let's take some yellow. Black and yellow gives us a lovely, rich green, doesn't it? And let's go along here and add a couple of dark bushes and trees. Let's take a bit more yellow. So you see, I'm adding these richer colours now on top of the darker colours, all right? Just to give a nice variety. And let's add a little one there. Pick up little bits of yellow, you see, on the corner of the brush. Just to suggest, I'm only just kind of suggesting little bits and bobs kind of off in the distance, little lights, little darks. Now I'm putting this down and I'm going to take another brush. 
and the brush I take is this small, it was a flat brush but it's kind of worn, see it? It's worn very slightly, similar to the one I just used. Now I'm going to take, with this dry brush, some cadmium yellow, a hint of blue and some white. And I'm going to just start adding some lights onto some of these, you see? Again, the very same technique, look. Just on the left hand side. And this just tells you now where the light is coming from, that's all. And let's put a couple along here. You see, it's very subtle, I'm kind of softening them in here and there. I'm just giving it a nice subtle depth. Now how's that? Nice simple trees off in the distance. Next job. So we're going along nicely now, nice and simple. Let's add some tree trunks. And I'm going to use a dark colour for the tree trunk. Let's take a tiny bit of black and a bit of burnt umber. I'm just going to add just one or two, kind of floating around here or there, off in the distance. Alright, we have another one here. And I'll put foliage on these as well, not to worry. And, um, you know, we have a couple just kind of dotted around the place, don't we? This is all just an impression of the scene, that's all. Okay? So you can see what I mean. Let's fix this little one here. And next we're going to do some... Let's try some uh, nice foliage with... How about a fan brush? Let me try a fan brush. And you'll all probably know this kind of a style. This kind of a Bob Ross style. Let's just try it. Let's mix up a nice dark green first. Some black. Now I dampened my brush, okay? Some yellow. Again, that's a nice dark earthy green, isn't it? So we'll start with a dark colour. And let's go up like this. Out a little bit at the bottom. So your typical Bob Ross kind of a style, yes? Let's just give it a go, see what happens. Same on the other side. Then I'm going to take some white, some yellow, and I'm going to add some light onto this here and there, look. Then we can try, um, let's try a different type of a brush for the next one. We don't have to have them all the same. I think the, the one mistake a lot of people make with paintings is they have too much, um, you know, everything is kind of the same. So they might have a perfect row of all the trees exactly the same way, or the clothes might be exactly the same all the way along. You have to vary everything in a painting. Even if on the photograph you might have three trees, or two trees, we say, exactly the same. Try and make them a little different. It just helps the composition of a painting, I find. So let's try a different type of one here now with this. Look, let's try this kind of one. See, we're using a different brush. That's all it is. All right, now I'll clean my brush very quickly. Just give it a little wipe with some turpentine on your tissue like that. And let's add on, let's go for some burnt cyanide this time. With a little yellow and a little dab of white. So we have a different kind of a highlight here now. And let's just try this. There now, see? Not bad, is it? There, something different. A different little tree. Now also, we have, in the photograph, there are little houses dotted along under the, behind the trees on the roadway. There are these little kind of suggestions of houses and that kind of stuff. So I'm going to take my small stubby brush, I'm a medium, a little bit of white, a little dab of Naples yellow, and I'm just going to go along very loosely and suggest little houses in the distance. 
kind of peeping through the the trees, okay? And um, we could even add a little touch of cyanide to one or two of them. Let's put the one up there. Uh, perhaps even a bit of brown there and there. So then I'm going to take my small brush. Let's take a little bit of black thinned out. Now you don't have to do this, you can just use little suggestions of this. Just make it your own. And look, I'm just going to suggest little windows and little, what I like to call bits and bobs in the painting, you see. It's just a suggestion. These are really just very small little suggestions of buildings and stuff off in the distance, popping through the trees, okay? Nothing fancy. Understand? Just gives you that impression. Now, we're walking our way down, and let's see, I'm going to put a bit of a grey across here just to suggest the footpath, okay? Let me get another flat brush. Another flat brush, a nice pointy flat brush this time. I'll dampen that. I'll take a little black and mix it into the white with a little bit of Naples yellow. And the Naples yellow is nice, it softens the colour nicely, you see? And you understand what I mean by it's very forgiving. So, let me show you. Bit of black. Now, if I take some Naples yellow, it'll make very little difference. I have a good bit of Naples yellow here now, you see? And it's not making a huge amount of difference. So it's very forgiving. If I was to use this, it would go green immediately. But Naples yellow has a lot of white in it. It's, lots of, it, it's very opaque. And it's a very soft pastel kind of a colour. So you can use a lot and get away with it. It won't spoil your mix. Alright. Now look, a little piece of a footpath coming along and sort of turns here. Like this. So this is our footpath coming around. Let me just get that loosely in there. And I might add a little dark just across the edge of the path over here, just to separate it from the water, okay? Just using the tip of the brush. And there we go. Sit back, take a look. Yes, I'm happy with that. I'm happy for now, anyway, let's say. Okay, we have um, I'm thinking we should maybe do the reflections next. What do you think? I think we should. Um, hmm. I'm just looking now, just making sure. Actually, do you know what I want to do? What I wanted to do was soften some of these kind of into the, the sky almost. So I'm going to take my large brush. I'm going to give it a good clean. Nice and dry. And I'm going to just very loosely sort of dab these kind of up into the sky and almost let them disappear. But I might even take a touch of white and a touch of Naples yellow on the tip of my brush and let them sort of disappear up in just to get rid of some of the edge on some of them, okay? I want to sort of soften them away into the sky to give them that distant, hazy sort of a look. I think that's a little better. Very lightly dab, 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 very gently, just to kind of let it sort of fade off. Yeah, that's a little better now, isn't it? Okay, next we have our water, and let me have a look now. I'm not again. I'm not going to go very crazy with the colours in the water. I am going to start with a very dark green. Pull the dark green down and then add little bits of light into that, okay? So let's go. Let's take some black and we're going to need lots of turpentine in this and some yellow and I'm thinking that might even do for now. Just add a bit more. So I'm going for the earthy colour, okay? Let me see. Let me just have a look at this. Hmm. That may be a bit dark. Let's take a little Naples yellow perhaps tiniest touch of blue no 
let me pull this down all the way across there we go pull this one down a bit further because that tree will be slightly longer and as we go along let's kind of add more colour to this so a bit more cadmium yellow, a little touch of white let's take a touch of blue and let's maybe try and get a little a softer kind of a colour you see to those distant trees and we can pull some in across here it's all about kind of varying the colour just slightly you know what I mean? just a little not too much and go right across and when you're painting water everything will be stretched sort of do you understand what I mean by that? it just gives a better illusion of distance on a river so the, the reflections are sort of pulled down and stretched down if that makes sense now I'm going to dampen my brush just to make it a little more a little more blue, a little more yellow a little more Naples yellow in there and that would probably do I have a hint of cyanide in that with kind of a yellow so I put a hint of that colour just in there as well ok, look, just a hint and then what I'm going to do is start adding my darks so we have a couple of dark ones around let's mix up a nice dark green now, a little bit of black, a little bit of yellow and here look, we have a nice little one there let's perhaps take a bit of burnt umber even and we have a nice one there, see? a little bit there um, let's take a little bit on that and then we can start adding our lights and I'm going to switch to another brush I'm going to switch to my other kind of flash medium one and I'm going to start adding some lights into this so a little bit of cadmium yellow, a bit of Naples yellow nice thick paint and I'm going to start adding a little light onto this one and I'm going to add a little light to this one here if you find it's kind of just disappearing add a little touch of white to your mix you see that should help that should help, a little bit of white helps the, the paint to stick because it's a little thicker um, let's take a little touch of cyanide with a little white and I'm just going to go like that ok now also how about some little tiny bits of white to suggest those tiny houses here and there look and that with a little cyanide with this one you see just a hint now the next job is I want to clean this brush well right clean it really really well and I'm just going to start adding some white a very whitey blue to some of the water here so I'm going to take some white I'll take a tiny hint of that blue tiny 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 little hint ok and I'm going to start and I'm, you know what? I'm not even looking at the photograph I'm just going my own now with this I'm just going to start pulling in some little bits of whitey colour and I've even picked up some of the green that's good because that really complements the painting so we've all these lovely colours all mixing together these greeny sort of colours I'm going to cross here a little bit take a little bit out of that because that's a bit low down there isn't it and I'm just very loosely suggesting some light from the sky catching the water ok just a little bit of white that's all Now, let me get a bit more, another bit of blue, and I'm going to just sort of flick it upwards. I'm keeping all my brush strokes 
horizontal, okay? Up and down, or vertical, sorry. Up and down, up and down. I'm not going left or right or anything like that. And that's very important, especially when you're painting water and reflections like this, that you keep everything up and down. Okay, I'm gonna leave it like that and take my soft brush, my soft blender brush here, and I'm gonna pull everything down. Now, the paint is starting to dry already on the canvas, so this not may work as well as I want it to work. And if it doesn't, I just have to keep going over and over and over the painting. And pull this one up, like so. Pull all the white up then. So you can see now what I'm doing. Now let's go left and right across this and see what happens. Let's just see if it works. I'm hoping it does. The paint is quite dry. I'll be honest, it's really kind of drying in on the canvas. Now, let me sit back a moment to take a look at this. Yeah, that's not bad. Let's get a palette knife. I'm going to take a little bit of that whitey bluey colour, just a tiny bit, and I'm just going to go along and add a little couple of tiny little ripples off in the distance. And when you put them through the reflections then, it immediately looks like a reflection, doesn't it? Isn't it strange how that just immediately turns into a reflection? And you can see the rippling of the water. It's fantastic, it really is. I won't do too much of this. Then let's soften this across very gently, just to take the edge off of it. That's all. And pull across this way. Now, let me sit back now again and have a look at this. Yes, that's not bad at all. Isn't it? I quite like this going on down here, it's quite nice. Um, what you could do is, if you wanted to add some more to your water, if you want, if you said to yourself, you know, it's nice, but I'd like a bit more. Let's take a small pointy brush and I'll thin out some white. Even a touch of blue perhaps. Okay, plenty of turpentine. And you could just go along, right? I'll show you now one moment with this very bright blue, just go along and add little little ripples with your paint here and there, look small little flicks, see? here and there, don't do too many of them just a few and have them sort of in groups, okay? Well, let me take a little bit of white just on its own so you can see this a little bit better. You see? Just having them in little groups. And it's just a nice way of showing the, the rippling of the water, that's all. I'm putting a little tiny bit of a curve on it. Just a little bit of a little flick, you see? Tiny, tiny little flick. And again, you know, you don't need to overdo this. Just the odd little bit here and there. Now let me sit back and take a look at this. Yeah, probably all right. Perhaps soften them, very small ones, off up into the distance on the water. Okay. There we go. And now, there are lots of ducks and swans and things like that, those types of birds around here. So off in the distance I'm going to just suggest little just dots. As if they're little birds in the water, little swans, even walking around. And when you go out here the place is full of these birds. It's fantastic. Absolutely full. There are thousands of them. And they walk around next to you and you can feed them the bread, all that kind of stuff. It's, fan it's a really fantastic place. And it's right in the heart of the city, in Cork City. It's only a, a stone's throw from the city centre. So if you're visiting Cork, go, go ask somebody where's the lock. 
and go up to the lock and take a little walk around and you can see all the wildlife now okay that's that then it'll take a tiny bit of let's say black a bit of brown even and let's just add a couple of little dabs here and there um, I'm not suggesting anything in particular it's just to give the impression of a little bit of detail off in the distance little little birds flying around little ducks and swans and all different types of birds there it's just it gives a little impression doesn't it now let's move on get this footpath done here so I take my medium stubby brush and I'm going to mix up a nice bit of grey now for this a nice grey let's take some black and let's take some white that's a nice grey a nice simple grey black and white okay you don't have to go mixing 20 different colours together to get a simple grey and I know there are lots of artists on YouTube and I, I, I watch I watch some different artists myself from time to time, you know. I like to learn too. And, you know, there are lots of them when they're mixing colours. Say, for instance, a simple grey. They might take a bit of black, and then they might take a bit of white, they might take a bit of brown, they might take a bit of red, they might take a hint of yellow. Um, it's just too much, I find. I think a simple grey, black and white. And if you want to make it warmer, add a touch of cyanide. So let me show you. If I wanted to make this a little warmer, okay? If I felt it was a bit cool, a bit too cold, let's take a bit of black, let's take a bit of white, let's take a hint of sienna. Right away, I have a nice warm grey. See? Straight away. No messing around with little hints of this and little hints of that. It's just a simple, warm grey. And keep it simple. It, because as I said earlier if you have too many paints on your palette you just get confused and you'll be thinking to yourself what color should I use for this what will I do? What, 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 you know what, what's the best what's the best type of color to get this just mess around with the colors that you have and I promise it will get easier and you will learn start to learn yourself what colors you would like to use let's try a bit of burnt umber for a change look um, you will kind of start to learn yourself what colors you like and what colours you don't like and as you can tell I like warm colours I don't like painting with cool colours too much now so the footpath is going, going kind of out of the painting slightly and it comes back into the painting up here then look there we are now I want to add a bit of darkness to it down here so let's take a bit of blue and a bit of pink and I'm going to add a little touch of brown so a nice kind of a shadow colour but again it's a kind of a warm shadow colour isn't it more pink, more brown Let's try that again. A bit of brown, a bit of pink, a little hint of blue. And I'm just kind of going in the direction of the foot patch, you see? Going in that direction. Flicking it up. Now, let me stop for a moment to take a look at this. That's a nice warm foot path, isn't it? And next, uh, I'm going to put a little wall. There's a small, very small little wall just along the edge of the footpath here, okay? Just to stop people from walking into the water, I suppose, and falling in. Um, you know, you might have a couple of pints on board. You might just walk right in without noticing. Let's um, give that a nice bit of an edge there. A little bit of brown, a little bit of black. And I'm going to go along here. And create my little, tiny little step. It's only about five or six inches high it's a small little step up so let me just use and I'm using big brushes you don't have to use small tiny brushes for this rod and let's go along here so 
that's the front of our little step. And you fade off into the distance, you see? And then we have the top of the step. And the top of the step is going to be slightly lighter. Um, I'll give it a bit of light. Let's go with some Naples yellow, some crimson, and a touch of cyanide. And then a little white, okay? Let's see. So the top of the step comes along like this, and I'm going to pull it inward, you see, like this. And I suppose, trying to get a perspective in a painting like this, always make it wider as it comes closer to you so it gets a lot wider. Now let me just darken it here a little. So it gets wider here and then it starts to narrow as it goes off, you see? So I'm then going to lighten the colour, give it a much lighter colour as it goes into the green. So we can see it. So I've just added a bit of white down to all. It's a big messy colour. It's kind of a grey with that hint of cyanide. And I'm going to go up here and just continue that. And let's take a small brush and just finish that off then with a little pointy brush, okay? Let's just go around here, like so. And then as it turns up here, you're going to see the front of the step. Understand? Like that. Now I'm going to take a little black, just a little black, and I'm going to suggest like little cracks between the stones and that type of thing, okay? It's just to give it a little, a little hint of detail, that's all. And you could even go down the front as well, and that will show you that there's a top and a side. See? And these are all just little tiny dots with the brush, little dabs. Very simple little dabs. Okay? Keep it simple. That's why I keep saying keep it simple. And that's best sometimes. Um, right. I'm going to add a little bit of light, perhaps, to the footpath up here. So I'm going to take a bit of that lighter colour which I had and just drag it across, okay? And follow the footpath around, look. Let's even take a bit of yellow and let's take a bit of pink and a bit of white. How about that? How about that nice bright colour? Let's get a bit of sunlight going on the footpath. Uh, touch more yellow. Nice bit of sun hitting the footpath here, look. Drag it around with your finger even. Sometimes the finger is the best brush to use. So you can get a lot of different effects. Now, what I'm going to do is, to create a bit more texture, on the footpath because it kind of looks quite flat at the moment doesn't it let's try some night work let's take some black let's take a tiny touch of brown and a touch of naples yellow and you end up with a kind of a marbled effect okay see that a marbly effect and let's just go along and drag that along here and there And it's just to give the impression of the roughness of the floor, that's all. Because it's not a smooth footpath at all, it's very sort of rough and pebbly sort of, you know. Okay, just like that. And then I'm going to sort of just pull it very gently across here and there. Now this is, this is how I've done the last painting, okay. And we will add leaves and all sorts of stuff then on the floor later on. 
when we're painting the lovely tree up here. So next, I just want to fill in this bit of white that we have, and it's just a green, it's just a basic green. So let me put that in there. And if we even soften it into the full pat, a little look, so everything is sort of nice and soft, merged together. You don't have to have kind of all these harsh lines everywhere. It can be nice and soft as well. See, isn't that better? Now, the next thing I'm going to do is take some more turpentine because my turpentine has run out. And then I'm going to put a couple of swans, <coughs> perhaps. Let's try putting a few swans around the place. So let's try one in the water here. Let's take a bit of white and put in a little swan. Little tail flicking up in the air. And let's put another one. Let's put another one next to it. And then suggest a tiny reflection, look. Tiny, tiny reflection. And perhaps there's a couple of little chicks following them around. Little baby swans. Okay. You see, I'm just giving a little impression, that's all. Let me get a nice small pointy brush now for this. A really small one. Let me take a little brown. And just suggest a little brown in the face. See? A little bit here and there. Isn't that lovely? Let's put one or two on the footpath because there are lots of them walking around on the footpath. See? A little gang. Little gang of them off in the distance, ready to jump on some guy and take his bread. How about that? Now, nice and simple, okay? So it's just adding, it's just about adding little details here and there. Now I'm going to just suggest as well, let me check the time on the camera, what have we? 46 minutes. You see that we have done here in 46 minutes, isn't that just amazing? Let's add some little touches of foliage on the ground. Okay, look, little touches of, little bits of leaves here and there. So now we're adding colour, real colour now to this painting. Let's make up a nice green, dark green. And I'm not mixing the colours, look, I'm just taking a bit of blue and a bit of yellow. And they'll create their own colours on the canvas, you see? Bits of cyan, bits of blue, bits of yellow, here and there. So, we can put plenty of foliage on the floor here now, okay? No, we'll just soften that off. And then, we can even put some darker ones. Here's some black and some blue. Then we have a big tree coming up here. Now, let's paint a nice big tree coming into the photograph, okay? I'm going to take a round brush. This simple round brush. Nothing fancy. And let's go for some burnt umber this time. Let's put some burnt umber here in the middle of our palette. And perhaps even a touch of black. Just a touch. Let's go up here and put in a nice big couple of branches coming into the painting, okay? There, now look at that. So I'm only using this now for the very thick branches. Then I will switch to a small brush, okay? So it's only just for this, these kind of two or three here, big ones, that are kind of going, it just covers the canvas faster, that's all. Another one 
one there, it comes out like that. So there's a tree outside the painting coming in. Now, let's switch our brushes again. Let's go to another long brush. Let me see. Ah, I have a nice little one here. Now, unfortunately, this brush has come loose. You see it? Now, okay. Now, you would say, okay, let's just throw it in the bin. But I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to take a little bit of tape, a little bit of masking tape, because I like this brush. It has a nice point. Let's just take a bit of tape around it. Oh, there. That wasn't difficult, was it? And our brush is like new again. Sorted. You see? Why throw it in the bin? It's absolutely fine. Now, let's go for some nice thin branches. Okay? Ah, there we go. Look at that. And it's just a matter of taking one and coming off of it multiple times. Do you understand? So you see, I come up with one and I come off it a few times. One there, and then another one, and another one, and another one. That's kind of pretty much the technique for painting branches and trees. You can go crazy with this. You can go completely wild and put thousands of them in. It's up to yourself. But I'm, kind of, I'm putting a lot of foliage over this painting. So I'm just going to keep it simple. Alright? No need to go mad. Ah, we've got a nice dab one down here. Let's put one or two off of that. It's always nice to have one or two coming into the painting, isn't it? It really helps. There we go. It's just nice and loose, that's all. Now, foliage time. I'm going to get more yellow on my palette. I think that's all I need. And perhaps a little dab of white. Perhaps. And let's add, actually, let's add somebody walking in the painting. Let's take a little bit of pink look. And let's put somebody, let's put the figure of someone walking off in the distance. Yeah, clean our brush. Take a little black. So it's just a carrot. See? We're only painting the shape of a carrot, that's all. I'll put a little head. There we go. Sorted. Job done. And we could put someone next to this person. Let's take some Naples yellow. And do the very same. And let's put an arm around. Like this. So they're holding each other. They're walking along. Holding each other. head on this one. There. Two little people walking off into the distance. Isn't that lovely? Now what was I saying? Yes, foliage. I'm going to take a flat brush, okay? And I'm going to just dampen it very slightly. Take some blue and some yellow. Let's get lots of paint on this. And let's go up here and just go like this. Look. Boom, boom, boom. Very loosely. All I want to do, all I'm thinking right now is cover a lot of this corner up here, okay, with colour. So just go very loosely with some loose flicks. Let's take some yellow on its own. I just want to get all this corner covered with a nice foliage colour. Perhaps a touch of burnt sienna. Eh? Won't do any harm with it. And let's go over here, right along. Let's take some brown and some yellow. Nice autumn colour. So you can see that most of our branches are almost covered really, aren't they? So very loose brushwork now for this. Alright. There we go. Let's try a couple of darker ones. Right 
there. Let's go and get some blue and a little yellow to make a very rich green. See, I'm just dabbing it around, that's all. Dabbing it and flicking it. Now, the next job is to take a small brush. Let me see now where's my small brush. Mm, I'll take this one, okay? A small brush, small flat pointy brush, a small round pointy brush. And let's take some yellow and let's just add a couple of flicks. This is the very same how I did the last one now, okay? This is how I did the one on my Facebook page with all the foliage. Look, just putting some little dabs of colour, thick colour, nothing else. Look, a little bit of yellow and suggesting some leaves. Some leaves here and there. Nice bright yellow. Especially down here in the darker area. A nice bright colour will show lovely. See? Uh, let's go more up here. Put one or two up here as well. Let's try a bit of whiting with that. See? How's that coming? Now isn't that lovely? A little bit more. Up there, come down. Let's try a little touch of sienna in there. And let's bring some kind of falling slightly, okay? Down into the painting. See, very just very small little flicks. So it's not just a block of colour. So we'll have one or two leaves kind of just falling off. Just like that. And then bring some down onto the floor down here, look. There. Now how's that? We just finish this corner down here. A bit of, a little bit of yellow down there, and a bit of brown and that, just to finish it off. There we are. And let's take a dark color and just bring a little bit of a dark color around here, just for that, and. Let me see now. Now it has a very kind of a stops here, doesn't it? The way the foliage comes over and stops has a funny kind of a line. It doesn't look right to me. So I'm just going to go along and add a couple of bit, little bits more just out here. See? There. And you could even, also what I did in the last one, was I took a palette knife as well. And I've done some with the palette knife. Okay. Some nice thick paint with the palette knife. And that also looked lovely, didn't it? So lots of varieties, lots of brights and darks. That's all. That's all it is. Don't be afraid. Just grab your palette knife and have a bit of fun. Come on. It's only paint. It's not the end of the world if I make a mistake. Right. And there we go. Now you can, if you want, keep adding little bits. Look, I might take some bright white and go down and go over some of these little ripples down here. Just to refine some of them, that's all. Just to let the show a little bit better. And it does give a nice impression, doesn't it? Let's put a little few under the swans there, so because they're making ripples along the water as well. Okay. And that's it. I would call this finished. Now I did make a frame. I have a frame for this down behind me. It's just painted. So let me get the frame, stick a frame on this, and um, let's have a look.
Okay, there it is. One frame ready to go. And there we have it, my friends. There we go. Now, how was that? Let me go back and show you this all the way back right there like that. Now, isn't that lovely? I might put another couple of ducks or swans or something around this corner here. It looks a little bit lonely, doesn't it? Um, or even, we could even just get our knives and add a little... Yeah, look, a little bit of foliage to the ground. Dot, 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 dot. Isn't that better? That just brightens up that corner just a little bit, doesn't it? And there we are. So I think that's pretty much finished. How much do you think? Let me zoom in now and give you the tour. There we go now. Okay. There we are. A nice simple suggestion of some distant trees. I just saw how I done the trees, but it's very simple. Just dab, 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 dab. Use a very worn brush and dab away. Okay, nice and simple. You can see I didn't do too much detail anywhere. And a few little ripples. Isn't that lovely now? I up into the foliage. So there we have it. The Lock and Cork, I hope you enjoyed it. It has been an absolute pleasure. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that. And I hope you got some little bits of information, little tips. Um, just keep things simple, I think is the best option. You can go for loads of detail and put loads of little leaves on trees and stuff like that. Um, if that's what you like, I, I prefer to keep it nice and simple like this because it's a painting, it's on photograph, you see? Just go and give it a try, have a bit of fun. Let me know what you think. Um, it's completely different to the last one I did, even though the scene was so much, it was very similar. So you can see how there were two completely different techniques. One was very, very loose and just kind of abstracty. The other one was just more of dabbing and nice, you know, nice little subtle um, colors. So there you go. Thank you so much for watching. I'll be back next week with a request, okay? I promise I will do a request next week. Um, don't think there's anything else now that I need to show you, is there? Let me see, no? I think I'm pretty much up to scratch with everything that I've done. Um, yeah, go on, go off and get a cup of... I'm very yellow. Jesus, look at the colour of me. This is shocking. Isn't it now, really? I don't know why it's this colour. It's very, very bright. Um, go on, I, I'll fix this on my editing. I'll see you next week. Thank you so much for watching and uh, God bless.